we got to found that there is some black leopard, which is a unique thing that we found in this, uh, you know, cameras. So leopards, uh, so we are, we are aiming to do kind of, um, we, did, we, we have not yet do that, uh, leopard coloring and sampling. So we are, that is one thing that we are aiming to do in, in, in the future. So this is where we, 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 we are doing our research of this work. So this, this is the map that is supposed to get, but I see, I see it is not working because um, it's not working because you know it 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 it, it brings the particular location that we are so sorry about that. So in our first kind of uh, our study, population study uh, and the abundance of leopard, we wanted to understand about the, that, and the, particularly we are working in Impala and Lisaba. So this is Mbala and this is Lisaba. So the red stuff that you see them there is the camera traps. We, we deploy these camera traps, you know, across this landscape. We, in, particularly, we, 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 are, we are covering like 420 kilometers total area that we are, we are covering to like, you know, we are covering to, to do our study. Uh, the, these remote cameras, you see it, uh, these are the red remote cameras. And this one is the, the, the border that we are covering. And these are the, you know, this is the, the map of the Luisaba and Impala. So we are using the, 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 this kind of uh, remote sensing cameras that we, we deploy them there. And we have 56 active cameras, particularly in, 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 a, in a place like in, 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 in Luisaba. And again, we have 33, 33 in Luisaba, 23 in Impala. So you have that 56 active cameras. So we, our cameras are like, you know, put in a particular area that we say that how, how, how do leopard, you know, walk? How, how, how many kilometers do they walk? So we say, we, we estimated that we say that we, a leopard can cover in a territory like 2.3 kilometers distance between the cameras because we say that if that it's a leopard disappearing in this particular area, so, so what we mean that is that it, because the three females cover, uh, two, three to four females cover one, Territory. So we say that maybe one male will appear in these camera traps. So in our cameras, this is how I hope this will work. These camera traps, they take a very good quality of our video. You see that, like, you know, we learn the behavior of the leopard, we get those patterns, and we can able to say that this is a different leopard, this is a new leopard. I have to play that again. Because you see that it's just, you know, it's just playing just like a normal cat, you know, a, a domestic cat. They do groom, they, you can able to learn the behavior, you can able to see those spots and you can able to see, because they, they are very different. They're very, uh, just, those spots, you could divide them as rochettes. Uh, and the, every single, uh, you know, rochette is different to each, uh, to another, to, 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 to different leopards. So you can able to tell that this is a different leopard appearing today. This is another one. And you can able to estimate uh, that way. That is how we are using the camera trapping now. So this is a heat map of the a current population that we have already estimated. We identified already 52 uh, uh, individuals. Uh, uh, so we have 30, uh, 30 older female uh, using those camera traps that I told, uh, that I've just already presented. And we have again 13 adult ma uh, ma uh, uh, males. And we have five sub adult females, uh, five sub adult male and two cubs. And we still have a lot of data that we still have to review and then present it later. So later on, I, I will, we will again, maybe in the future can able to present to say that this year we have how many of them. So uh, as I told you that uh, 12.4 leopards as per, per 100 square kilometer, like a leopard, uh, you know, have to cover that by a particular kind of a location that we can able to estimate it as according to the heat map and again, kind of a way that we can able to tell that leopard can walk all that way. So that is now for the ecology part. Uh, we still have a lot to do, but again, now we go to community because our work is not successful without the involvement of community. We don't have to say leopard, we, we, we do leopard conservation without involving the local people, we, without, uh, you know, trying to mitigate these conflicts to, to the people. So our first goal is that we involve a what we call community reporting network, whereby each and every single people that you see in, in, in the screen, these are our community representative according to the communities that we work, and we give them what you call the mobile, the, the, the mobile uh, phone, 
we, we, we design a kind of a questionnaire using a kind of an app called uh, Safe123. And this app, you can able to, it can able to uh, uh, give a, a representative, uh, you know, a very easy way of filling data, like going to the community and try to, 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 to talk to the people that, um, you know, like how do they have to go and they try to ask people about, the, the, uh, you know, what, what conflict did they cause? What is going on, or maybe what's when is the OSHA kind of attacked? So they can able to fill all that kind of data. And monthly, we go to communities and try to get that kind of a, you know a, that kind of a, a information. So this guy is here. This this is how we we, we we get to see that it is very easy to work with the local community and they can, they can give a right information because these guys they are living in the community. They are the ones that are working. They, they, the only thing that our team does is that we go to community every month, we collect those mobile phone, we collect that data and like, upload in our database and they can able to tell uh, uh, how many cases we have in, in that particular area. So uh, in, in, that, in that case, uh, in the month of April 2019, because uh, we, 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 that is 2019 and 2018, we this community reporting network they have already reported like eight uh, eight hundred and fifty uh, report first year for uh, and the, the cases the, the, the people claim that forty five percent are hyenas forty four are leopard forty five at attack occurred at the bomber because we also ask in one of the questionnaire whether the, 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 the cases occurred in the bomber or outside the bomber. So uh, the bomber is the enclosure where the livestock stay. So 65 of the attack were at night because we want to also, also to understand whether these cases are happening during the day or during the night. 95% livestock or attack are, are shot. The, the, the shots are both sheep and, the, and, and, and goats. So. We ninety five percent of them are being attacked by these carnivores, hyena and leopard. But you know, it's very rare to get a cow that is being attacked. So again, we do have a weather station that uh, we have in the particular those particular communities, and we wanted to understand when is these cases happening. Isn't it happening in, in during the day? Isn't it you know you know you know it, uh, during the dry season or wet season? And that is how this. You can see that uh, uh, you know uh, that, that conflict report is just like you can able to estimate to tell how many uh, how that, that that one occur. Another study that we are also conducting in local communities is a we have to call bomber monitoring study, and this is from the one lady called uh, 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 Claire uh, Claire from uh, Michigan State University. She, we are running this study because we wanted to know. Uh, to understand which carnivores are coming to the bomber. And in, in this particular bomber, you see it, we have camera traps here that are like, we have a camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four, camera six, if the bomber, this, the bomber is big. But again, we want to know which carnivores are coming. And these cameras, they are only set to take uh, the, 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 the data during the night because during the day, people are doing human activities. So we wanted to understand when are these cases happen. And in this particular bomb, again, we still have what we call the, the audio mods. The audio mods are the, 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 these are the, you know, the voice recorders that they can able to tell us how many, you know, what is, how do the owner of the bomber react to go and try to, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, react to the kind of attack or any, uh, something sort of like that. So, this is one of the studies that is we are conducting, and the, the data, the, the, you know, the, 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 the report about this data is yet to come because we are uh, re, uh, Claire is uh, is now ending her, her PhD uh, study, and she is going to present to us what already uh, have been done in this particular area. So, in this particular area, again, this particular bomber, uh, we do have what you call flash light uh, parameter. Like you see it, you have outer, outer bomber flash uh, de 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 detection parameter. You can able to know which, uh, how do, how, where, where, where this kind of a camera reaches. Like it reaches like this particular location, and this is the enclosure of the bomber. So that is how we can able to know the light of the camera goes up to here. Like you, you see it, like you know, you can able to see. If a carnivore come across here, I can able to see which carnivore is this, and you can able to estimate how many cases of the carnivores that we have already gotten. So, and the, 
in our preliminary kind of a report that we have already you know established that we saw that the the, the biggest kind of a carnival that is coming is hyenas so only the local community are just only blaming the the, the leopards so we wanted to understand because we want to know which how can we how can we mitigate these conflicts we cannot just uh, say that we have to bring this kind of a, of, a, of a protection measures without knowing which carnival is coming to visit Obama. So that is uh, the purpose of, of, of us doing uh, this study of Obama. So here, we, we, we decided now to go to the bombers after we have learned a, a preliminary report about the bomber study. And we, we issue people with testing uh, predator deterrents, that is wire and light. And the, this is this is us in one of the particular area. We have a tractor here. We have this is our field post, our field post, and this is a fence team that is working. The community, the, this particular uh, particular kind of a, 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 a predator deterrents, we are taking this initiative to to give out to the community. We have already covered like eight bombers in our first phase. We are going another phase very soon, and four with four communities. And this particular communities. The one that uh, we have conducted this, uh, the community reps that you saw. So, the, we we use this report, uh, uh, community re uh, reporting network data, to issue this kind of a wire. And again, the bomber study data. We still use that particular. And we have forty uh, eight bombers. So we issue what we call forty wire, uh, forty lights, detarians, and the forty wires detarians. Because we wanted to know, uh, uh, which kind of a it's light working, it's wire working. That is why we put in very equalizing because we want to understand which one work best. Then we can able to recommend to the, to the local authority, maybe the KWS or the local people or community to tell them that, you know, you guys use wire because it's working. But as, as, as a project, this is just our first uh, initiative that we are taking. We have covered already eight bombers. We have the other, the other one, 40 are coming up and another phase is coming so that we can continue to cover the all local community. So our understanding here is, again, we wanted to understand the, 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 the ecology of the leopard because it's less known about leopards because as you know that leopards are this kind of a species of animals that are very elusive, they're very shy. You can't see them in the world, especially African leopards. So for us going into details about this is that we are doing a kind of a air snack, kind of a, 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 a study that we, we, we place a, the air snack in the field. We use the perfume channel number five. Uh, uh, in the next uh, few few months, again, we are going to present you these guys if you, if, you, if you are interested to learn about leopards. Is that we we we, we gather these those airs in the field, we test them in the laboratory to learn about the DNA, and you can able to know the population of those leopards. But uh, uh, that, that that is our 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 that goal of broadening to understand about the 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 the, 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 the leopards, the African leopard. So. And in that particular case is that we also want to understand to know why the, the, the black leopards are happening, especially in, in, the, in a very semi-harid area in, in, in Africa, like here in Laikipia, because you see now that uh, leopards are like, you know, the, the, this black leopard are working very well. We have like 10 individuals already now that you have already identified. Uh, here in Laikipia, across Laikipia in Impala and Lisaba. So we, we think we say that these black leopards they're working very well, and why, they, why are they working well? That is why we are we we are going to another next level of understanding the ecology. And the, in that in, in that case, I I want to present you a clip of the black leopard in, that we have spotted in March 2019. This particular female is a black leopard, and she is given birth to that cub that you see it there with a black cub again. So these two guys are sibling. The cubs are siblings, but the mother is coming up, and you will see it. You know that that this this is this is a kind of a, a it's very interesting because these guys are of the same mother, and we want to understand what genes are is it that this this female has a recessive gene or a dominant male or to have what we call a recessive gene. So we want to understand about that. So they're working very well. They're doing very well here in Kenya. And the, that is why we want to use the hair snag a, a, a research to understand because we will collect those hairs. The leopard will come, rub the, the hair snag, we collect those hairs, we take to the lab. Then we can able to understand which, how do that work. So I think uh, 
And that is just the, 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 the end of my presentation. But again, I want to let you know that the elephants are another African leopard here in Kenya. As we do this, we go across these communities. Uh, we, this guy's community reporting networks, they are also still collecting other data about the elephants or other animal rights that are creating conflicts. We get to see elephants are really having a lot of troubles, bringing also to the local people because, you know, people here live a, in, a, in, in a scattered kind of a lifestyle. Like in, in Northern Kenya, people do live in a, in a way that they move from one location to another in search of pastures. Sometimes people, communities uh, uh, do stay in a, in, in a, in a, in, in a elephant corridor because these, these elephants here, they are wealthy. They, they, they follow their corridors to move also to go from one area to another. Like in Samburu, they move from Samburu to Saba in breed, during their breeding, breeding seasons and they come across these communities. They create a lot of conflicts. People can be killed by elephants. And communities, as we do what call uh, this work, people are blaming a lot again elephants. So it's very interesting that, uh, that I, I, I got to come to do this presentation uh, here. So thank you very much for uh, uh, listening to me. So this is our team, uh, uh, Dr. Nicholas Filiford, uh, Lenguia, Limo, and myself. So that's, that's uh, the, the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, John. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ambrose. Fantastic video. Um, uh, as you and I, we talk a little bit anyway on, on Facebook and the like, so you know that we, I know we're both lovers of black cats and I, I love your leopards. Um, and leopards are very, very difficult to see here in Asia as well. Um, almost, I think, possibly more threatened than, um, certainly on the Thai side in Southeast Asia, more threatened, unfortunately, than, than, than in Africa, or uh, well, certainly in Kenya. Um, just before we open up to other questions, can I ask about the impact of COVID um, with your community volunteers? Have, has it become, have you seen things becoming worse? Um, I know Loisaba and the tented camps up there have, have had a lot of, has, has had almost a loss of tourism or a total loss of tourism, which has made funding difficult, but also some things we're seeing here in Asia are people returning to the cities and becoming more dependent on rural lifestyles and possibly a bit of bushmeat poaching and things like that. Are, are you seeing that? Is it interfering with the leopards or um, are, is, it a, is it something that's remained steady? So I, I can say COVID has just impacted a lot. This has created a lot of uh, problems uh, and caused a lot of, uh, you know, you know, a lot of problem all over the world, but particularly here in Kenya, like in the area, in Laikipia, that I, where the particular place that I live, it, Laikipia is known to be a, a destination for the tourists. People depend with, uh, tourism is one of the, uh, like the uh, uh, 70% of people depend, depending, like most people they, that I work with here or my community people, they have been like, they don't have job anymore because of COVID. Uh, the Elevana is closed, the big hotels are closed and the, the people who have been employed there, they are now like, they're at home. Again, COVID has affected a lot of, uh, a lot because in most areas, conservation areas in, in Laikipia and across Kenya, they don't have what call conservation fee that being used to, to pay renters. So it has really hit it a lot. And in particular areas that I live, we get to see nowadays, the, uh, you know, it, it, the economy is like, it's really hit, it has, it has a lot. I have a group of women called Shui Mamas that I, I co-founded, and they, 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 these women used to do what to call bid work. They no longer uh, uh, do that that work, and we are trying to to, to bring uh, several ideas for them to 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 to, to work, and so that they can able to earn living, like making soap and other other things. So it has really impacted uh, in in negative way. So I can say that it's really affected a lot. Okay, and actually, I will ask you. I was going to ask you about the Choi Mamas and where we can buy their things, but I'll ask you that towards the end. Um, so, for now, do we have any other questions? I see uh, Georgie, who is on the Zoom. Um, do you have any questions? Would you like to to ask them or unmute yourself and ask a question? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Yes, I can. Hi. Uh, introduce yourself as well. Who are we? we don't know you. Hi, I'm Georgie. So I worked on the Wildlife Warrior program. I did research um, into the kind of effectiveness of conservation education. And I'm kind of interested in 
that side of things and how conservation education is helping obviously the community reporting is really really important I really like like that model but in terms of conservation education um what are you doing uh, in that respect in terms of leopards Ambrose uh, thank you very much, Georgia. And congratulations, first of all, I saw that you got a, a, a job in Thailand. So maybe you might be able to meet the John. In the oh, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, I can say that, <laughs> yeah. so I can say that uh, uh, the uh, conservation education, that is one of the things that we do in Luisaba. We have a program that we, uh, uh, Luisaba and, the, and San Diego Zoo, they partner together to bring kids all across the landscape to educate them. And the, myself and a guy called Lexon Larpey, and again, uh, uh, Paul Washira, all of us together, we do a, a collaboration kind of a, a, a education that we, we give these kids about, we teach these kids about, if myself, I, am, I work for leopards, uh, we, we teach them about leopards, Larpey teach them about giraffe, and the, Washira teach them about the, the, the community, uh, our community is very important for conservation and, you know, again, and again, maybe a guy called uh, Wanyama Holis who is a Lusaba conservation uh, uh, officer, he teach them about elephants because he do research for elephants. So uh, that is one thing that we are we are doing for, uh, for our program because we wanted also to have uh, kids to learn more about, uh, uh, more, more, more about this species. Amazing, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much, Georgie. Uh, do we have any questions from the Facebook? Miss Kun Hi. Sorry, Kun John. So I'm actually on U account. Oh, hi, Nisa. Yep. <laughs> so there's no question on the Facebook page at all today. <laughs> okay. Do you have any questions, Nisa? Uh, from um, a veterinary perspective, maybe? I can't think of any. At the <laughs> Sorry moment. to put you on the spot there. Okay, well, brilliant. You obviously, um, you obviously covered it all very well, Ambo. So, um, uh, yes. Uh, the, is there any plan? Can I ask before we start? Is there any plan for uh, the Choi Mamas for us to be able to to purchase Choi Mama soap and some of the leather work and bead work? I know you do. Is there any way that we can get hold of them in the rest of the world? I need a new belt. So sure, I think uh, I'm getting this a lot of uh, a lot of these questions across. So many friends of mine asking me how can they buy this uh, Shui Mama's product. There is this a kind of a, 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 a international media from Australia which they 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 they, they featured about Shui Mama's and so many people are asking how can you help uh, Shui Mama's? How can you buy this? And but the big problem that we have uh, is the is shipping shipping our, our product to other uh, countries but i think we are we are working on that because uh, our board is working to get a, 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 a kind of a, a stable uh, website whereby they can able to place the the the, 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 the this product and they can be sell all, all across the world but yeah I, I can tell you that if you are here in kenya you are going to get the whatever thing that you need the only problem we do have is the shipping of this product for the three months Okay, fair enough. So working on that, uh, but I, I um, encourage everybody to uh, to follow Ambrose on Facebook and to, to learn more about it. And as soon as the shipping is available, to to uh, to, to get involved as well. So uh, yes, I think that... I have another question, if I can. You may certainly go ahead. Yeah. Um, so uh, my research uh, did a lot about kind of the cultural attitudes towards human wildlife conflict and how the Samburian Maasai culture um, really have a extensive relationship with the land and I'm just wondering like how does culture impact how do you think culture impacts uh, the community's attitudes towards wildlife Ambrose? Mm, if I can be able to answer that is that culture is mm, is affecting all the conservation and that a lot of communities uh, that you see the the, the the wildlife uh, 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 parts like, for example, some communities use the, the giraffe's uh, tail to uh, for the cultural purposes, and in I can't really hear you, Ambrose. I don't know if it's just me. No, 
think Safaricom has um, Safaricom yeah. delivered. <laughs> Hi Ambrose, are you are you there? We missed we lost you for a bit. Yeah, yeah, you were listening, are you getting me now? Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear I didn't basically get... any of that. What, please repeat. Sorry, sorry, sorry the, 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 it was just a bad connection. So I can say that in uh, World Life, uh, there's communities who are using World Life parts, especially like some, some of them using a, 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 a giraffe tail. Other communities mm -hmm. are using what we call the le leopard uh, skin. But through education, through education of different kind of people that are coming to tell that they just do wildlife conservation, it's really mm. uh, impacting that to reduce that kind of uh, 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 people using those uh, things in culture. Some communities are using what we call the the the, the dig digs. Uh, uh, you know, they kill the dig dig and they still use them in, to put the young boys the, 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 their parts. So I can say that through education, it's really helping out to, uh, you know, to reduce that kind of, but yeah, you are right to say that the culture is again, you know, is affecting the wildlife conservation, but in this century that we are, it's really helping out. Yeah. But I think it affects it in a good way and a, and a bad way. It depends on the community and the kind of, the, the, yeah, the concept, because I kind of felt, found that kind of culture impacts people's views on the land, like in a positive way, but obviously you still have bad practices that are happening. So it's interesting to kind of see how culture impacts different communities. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ambrose. Welcome, Julia. Okay. Oh, you've unmuted, or Nisi, you've unmuted yourself. Any questions? No. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think in that case, all that remains for me to do is to thank our sponsors here in uh, in Anantara Golden Triangle up here in the far north of Thailand. If you are in Thailand, please do come and see us. Come and see Anantara. Um, and you can see our, unfortunately, not wild, but our captive elephants um, gra grazing down below. Um, if you are in Kenya and you can travel, as, as um, Ambrose says, uh, there I know there are a lot of places suffering, but I, I can personally vouch for, um, for Loisaba and Laikipia to be a beautiful part of the world. And I'm extremely jealous that um, Ambrose is sitting there with the, the, uh, the savannah behind him. And I wish I could swap places for a second anyway. Um, so if you are there and you are in Kenya and you feel like traveling and seeing, seeing something new, please do go and see and support the, support the conservation issues up, up, up there by being part of the tourism and buy something from Choi Mamas. Um, and I think that's about it. Just to let everybody know that I think we're going to be doing another lockdown live stream. So if anybody who is watching would like to join us on Facebook with our captive elephants, they will be live at 5 p uh, 4 30 p.m tomorrow afternoon we will go live um, and we will also have our next elephant professional lecture will be an elephant uh, professional it'll be back to, we're moving back to thailand and we'll be hearing from dr uh dr tip who is uh the vet who is heading up um a lot of the the thai elephant alliance and a lot of the um, captive elephant response to to COVID um, and has been traveling for the last five or six months looking after all of these out of work elephants and uh, making sure that they're all as healthy as possible and living, adjusting to their new lives. Some of them back in the jungle and some of them not so well looked after. So uh, that will be very, very interesting to, to hear from. Um, and so uh, that's it. Thank you very much everybody for watching. Thank you for joining. Most of all, thank you to Ambrose. Thank you for for all of the work you do for bringing us for bringing us all of the news of your of your black leopards and or your the community work and everything else i know you probably get bored of people talking about black leopards but it is we love the videos um and of course it does underpin all the other great work that you're doing so so thank you for that um and yes that all that remains is to uh, uh is to to say goodbye um thank you very much everybody for for joining thank you very much john